Okay, I hate this, all right? I hate this, and I have been avoiding this for at least a month now. But finally, the night before last, I said, I, I just, I gotta bite the bullet, and I gotta get this done. What, what am I talking, I'll get to what I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But just to bring it right up to speed, our charger, we're getting this thing ready to go out on power tour. So the clock is ticking, I really gotta get hustling on this. And we brought the car in, we had a crunched rear quarter panel and a bent frame rail, so we, we did all of that, we straightened that out. And then I, I did the transmission, we had to rebuild the transmission, so I did that, and that's all done, ready to go back in the car. And I've been cleaning up underneath the car and, and sucking hell, I've been sucking hell under the car a little bit at a time. It's still an unholy mess, but it's, it's a lot better than it was, I kind of live with it now, right? But the big thing I had to get done before I started putting the whole thing back together again was the lower control arm bushings. So you guys know how much I love these cars. I, I, I don't have to tell you, it's, it's no secret. You know, I, the classic era Mopar just talks to me. I love everything about these cars. I love the ideas behind these cars. I love the styling. I love the engineering, the engines, the transmissions, the rear ends, the rear suspensions, all just world class, the unibodies, brilliantly thought out overbuilt components because these things when they were designed and engineered and built nobody in their wildest imagination could could fathom that 50 60 years down the road these things would be cult classics and people would just love them and worship them and, and do all of this stuff to them they were they was they were throwaway cars they were throw but they were overbuilt throwaway cars and they were beautifully perfectly engineered overbuilt cars but not that part of it. So we've already done a couple of videos on the Mopar front suspension in the torsion bar. And for those who aren't familiar, the torsion bar is the front spring on a Chrysler product. Fords and General Motors used a coil spring back in those days, and Chrysler used a straight torsion bar. So it was the twist of the torsion bar that gave the car suspension. And the beauty of that is that it's adjustable. There's, there's a, a nut or a, a bolt, I should say, on the bottom of each control arm. And by tightening it or loosening it, you can raise or lower the car. You can jack weight side to side. It's adjustable. You've got an adjustable front suspension. If you, if you race these things, it's a godsend. I mean, you, you, can, you can jack weight however you want. You know, with just a couple of turns of, of, a, of a ratchet and you're done. But... As over-engineered and as beautifully engineered as these cars were, is as bad as the system they used to anchor the lower control arms to the cars. And as I just got done fighting with this. Because at some point, somebody did a disc brake conversion on this car, so the spindles weren't that bad to swap in and out. But the, the lower control arms and the torsion rods had never been removed. And it was just, it was a war to get the, the that's besides the point. All right, so I got it apart. So here's the Achilles heel of these things. And if, if you're new to Mopar or, or you've, you've got a front end that, that wanders around, you know, every time you go over a bump, it, it wants to change direction or follow the crown in the road or wears our tires weird. Or you're just driving down the road and you go over a dip and then all of a sudden the car goes like that. It's your lower control arm bushing. And uh, it's just stupidity. I mean, it's horrible. It's a bad design. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a bad design. All right, so this is the lower control arm from this car. And this is the pivot pin. This is the part that bolts into the K-frame. So here's the basic architecture of this thing. Here's your ball joint and the lower ball joint. This is actually in good shape. Uh, the rubber needs to be replaced, obviously. But the ball joint itself is in good shape, so we'll keep that. This is a bump stop, and this right here is where all of the action happens. This is the section that the, the bushing, the lower control arm bushing, and the torsion bar right. So this pin goes in here like this, and this is anchored to the K-frame, right? So this is holding it steady, along with a strut rod that comes here. But this is holding the, the arm straight, steady. And on this side, you've got the torsion bar, and the torsion bar keys into the hex here and that's what keeps everything steady and the torsion bar the spring the spring load of the torsion bar is transferred through this lever so this lever right here is what actually holds the car off the ground this is the this part right here is the suspension and then flip it over here you've got this assembly so you've got this this anchor and 
in there. Don't fight me. It's been fighting me. So you've got this anchor that fits in there like that, it swivels. And then you've got this bolt. And this bolt is how you tension the torsion bar. So you tighten this and you increase the load and you loosen it and you decrease the load. And this is where all of your adjustments take place. So this is all pretty straightforward and it's all, it's all good, except for this. So right there is where the lower control arm bushing would be. And this pin would go through the center of this and it would be held centered by the lower control arm bushing. But in Chrysler's infinite wisdom, or uh, let's say shortcuts in, in manufacturing, because remember, these were not intended to go the long, long haul. This was a setup that was supposed to last a few years while you kept the car and then, and then you'd, you'd junk it, you know? But, needless to say, this pin is held steady or held centered by the bushing. And the, the combination of the bushing, the pin, and all that keeps the control arm steady. Because there's no provision for movement in this assembly, one of two things happens. 90% of the time, the rubber that goes between the pin and the bushing disintegrates, just like it did here. So instead of this riding in the center, it rides off to the side. And then when you go over bumps or irregularities in the road, it moves around. And when it moves around, it changes the alignment of the car. So that's the vast majority of times when you have a problem, that's where it is. But sometimes, sometimes, because this isn't keyed, this part goes through the K-frame and it's held down with this, with this nut and washer. So sometimes the bushing will be will have a better grip on things. The rubber of the bushing will have a better grip than the tightness of this nut. And so this will wallow back and forth in the K-frame and actually wear out the K-frame. And that'll give you exactly the same symptoms as you'd have with a bad bushing. Chrysler put no provision, gave no thought to the fact that while this is a totally active part, the rubber, the, the bushing, is always fighting. It's always wearing with no, no ability to, 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 to freely move or to be lubricated even. So this was just, just an assembly line, you know, cheap, get it done, get it out. And, and this is miserable. It's a miserable, miserable job. It's a, it's a bad design, right? I'm, 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 and I can say, you know... I love these cars, I love everything about them, but this is a terrible design, and this causes a lot of grief. So the, the only way to change these things out is, I shouldn't say that, it's not the only way. I've changed these without a press, because I don't have a press. The only reason I would have a press would be to do bushings like this. I don't do work that requires a press very often. So when I've got to do these, I'll just generally hit up one of my friends with a press and have them knock the, the bushings in and out. I have done these without a press. You don't want to attempt this without a press. It's a bad job. It's a miserable, it's a bad scene. I mean, it's a really bad scene. You don't want to get involved in it. So, but there are plenty of tutorials online on how to swap these bushings out with a press. I don't think I've ever seen any without a press, but, but you don't want to know that. That's like, that's like knowledge you don't want to know. All right. But typically, now to show you, just to show you how Mickey Mouse this setup is, all right? Now, obviously, the, the bushing is dis it's disintegrated. This is just how I took it out. You've got... You've got the, the inner bushing that goes around this pin, the rubber, and then this outer shell. And this outer shell has to be removed before you can, you can put a new one in, obviously, right? Well, just to show you how Mickey Mouse this is, Chrysler had special tools and procedures for everything. If you go through their service manuals from the era, they have special tool. You name it, they got a special tool. They got a special procedure. They got a special everything, except for that. Except for that. You know what the special procedure for that one is? You'll get a kick out of this. So here's, here's the service manual. Remove bushing outer shell by cutting with a chisel. Use care not to cut into control arm. <laughs> Chrysler's telling you just beat it out with a chisel. That's not the way to do it. That's the way Chrysler says to do it. The easiest, most expedient way to do this is 
what, what I've always done with them is you just take a washer you take a, you take a nice thick washer you lay it in there and you weld it you weld it around this shell and then you can get in from the other side with a with a drift and knock knock the shell out there are other ways you could do it but i found that that's the easiest way just the heating from the welding and then it cools off breaks the the the, the grip and it, it'll just it'll tap out pretty easily there are other ways but that's the way i've done them so that's that's the in my opinion the achilles heel the the worst part about dealing with these vintage mopars what are you going to do and that's your problem if you've got one of these cars and like i says every time you hit a bump or you, you know what happens too the car will be fine right uh you'll be driving around the road and everything's fine it'll even go over bumps okay but you give it gas when you give it gas the front end comes up just a little bit and then all of a sudden the car will want to steer in all different directions until it settles out again where the tires will start to like you'll get out of the car the tires will be they'll be pigeon toed right because those bushings are gone and there's nothing to hold that control arm steady i i hate i hate those things maybe i'm overreacting but you know everybody's allowed to have their pet peeves no that's mine chrysler lower control arm bushings all right and i got uh, oh i ordered a set of there, there's a new type of bushing right so typically i just replace these with the standard bushings but I found that there's a new type of bushing that they're using where the outer shell, the old outer shell, stays in place. And it's a urethane bushing that gets pressed onto this pin. And then I imagine it'll, it's allowed to float in there. It's allowed to move freely because it's, it's not a press fit. It's just it's a, it's a slip fit. So I'm going to clean that up really good. I ordered those bushings, but they haven't gotten here yet. Otherwise, I'd show you how they go together. But, all right, that's it. We gotta stop with this now. Because I have to go take the other side apart and it fits anything as unpleasant as, as the, the first one. I, I, I hate this stuff. I'll see you tomorrow.